I'm a hustler. At the end of the day, I'm here to build an empire. And an empire doesn't get by on being comfortable. If you want to build an empire too, you will need both sides of this equation to make it work. You will need the ability to produce high, quick income from the flipping side or wholesaling side. But I can tell you, mastering flipping pays a little bit more per deal. They're going to make it wholesaling. But you may need to start if you've got no money at all. Right? You're trying to get going. You may need to start like a lot of people start, like how I started in wholesaling. Wholesale out a couple of deals, learn how to flip a couple of deals. But your long-term goal is to buy cash-flowing properties that will provide an income to you and future generations forever. And that's how you get off this reel. This is how you become financially independent through real estate. Okay, but a lot of people teach the buy and hold strategy. They fail. To, they leave out the part where you need a ton of capital to get going. Check, check, one, two, one, two. Turn, turn it up, turn it up. Welcome to the Foreclosure Deals Coach Podcast. The tides are turning. The time is now. You're home for the mindset, methodology, and tools needed to invest in foreclosures. Don't you dare buy a house. Buy a deal. You need to get into this right now. Right now, yeah. And now your host, the Foreclosure Deals Coach, Donnie Corum. Hello, 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 and welcome back to the Foreclosure Deals Coach Podcast. I am your host and Foreclosure Deals Coach, Donnie Corum, broadcasting live (laughs) from our downtown Denver studios with my executive producer and main man, Mr. Jonathan Winston. Hello. How do you do? How do you do? Hello. Hello. It's so good to have you on the show, man. How you been, man? How's how's life? Life is life is moving along quite swimmingly. Um, you know, I got I, I really can't complain, man. Just keeping an eye out for deals on the market. Um, Wait, you're, you know, you're deal hunting, man. You know, I'm using that dealhunter.io link Ooh, that we uh, that, nice. that we speak about quite frequently on the show because it is very helpful for you. You know, foreclosure deal hunters and real estate investors and just people out there that are. You know, trying to build that wealth and, you know, just grow through real estate. It's the ideal tool for you. Um, You can find cash buyers on there. You can find, um, you know, vacant properties. You can, uh, any type of investment angle that you're looking for, you can probably find it on uh, dealhunter.io. Dealhunter.io. That was an incredible, that was a good spot, man. Like, I feel like you stole my thunder a little bit, but like. Well I mean, done. I said, I'm going to assist this thunder to That's you good. right like, now. There's a, there's a pass. Behind he, the back. He could go all the. Okay, we're football. Never mind. It's confusing. All right, so let's get, let's get, let's get going. <laughs> <laughs> if, if nothing else, we have fun on this show, and I, I hope you guys find it amusing, but, you know, it's my show, so it really doesn't matter if you do or not. Um, let's get to it because we want to get to the meat and potatoes of the show. And, you know, and just really re- real quick recap. Thank you for that. But seriously, guys, if you want to get started in your path of foreclosure investing, you're going to need a tool to go out and find deals. Right? You're going to need a tool to analyze those deals. You're going to need a tool to find cash buyers. And all of that can be done with one tool, dealhunter.io. You know, And I, I think it's the most incredible thing that's happened to real estate. The problem was in the past that in order to find deals, you needed to get a real estate license. Right? And, and how much fun was that, Jay, getting your real estate license? Did you enjoy that process? Um, let me see. If you could like watch paint yeah. drying on the wall. Mm-hmm. But then have somebody like pouring like <laughs> scolding hot water on your back while you're watching it. That might be what it was like reading all those. You know, you know it's funny. There's like, real points. estate agents out there. There's two types right now. One of them's going, "Yep, yep, preach on." Like, that was that was miserable. <laughs> yeah. The other side's going, "No, nah, man, it wasn't that bad." And you're lying. You know it was that bad. I mean, <laughs> it's like you know, it's just memorizing information. But still, bro, like that's not. That's not what you got in the game for, yeah, right? Yeah, man. I came to sell the houses and, you know, look cool and stuff. Man. That's right. And you do. You're, you're, you're a cool dude. Like, you're just, Thanks. like, straight up cool. All right. So, th- th- I got this article from Realtor Magazine that's talking about the 15 most affordable college town for renters. Now, here's the thing. Like, what we're going to be going over is buy and hold investing and the future of your wealth in foreclosure investing, right? But... To get there, you have to understand that the goal of fix and flipping, the goal of what we teach when you sign up for the Foreclosure Deals Coach program is to help you through your first fix and flip deal, right? And ideally, the second one and the third one and all the subsequent ones after that because you're building this incredible income through doing it. But the true goal of real estate investing is to go passive, 
Your goal is to make enough money that you can buy rental properties so you don't have to work anymore. Listen, man, I love this gig. I love buying real estate, selling real estate, the coaching people on, on real estate. I love this industry, but I got to be frank with you, man. Like the long-term goal is to stop having to do it. Makes sense. Right. So to get there, this article, Realtor Magazine, talks about the most 15 affordable college towns for renters. And why is that important? Because um, if you're going to rent, you want a stable rental market to rent to. And these college towns have students that, generally speaking, don't have money yet to buy houses. So their parents are paying their rent so they can get through school. My parents didn't do that for me. Jay, did your parents do that for you? I was at Cadoba, man, flipping those burritos and... Doing um doing a lot of like whatever it's super up. tall quesadilla making after you know after we got off work yeah. uh, <laughs> I had so much Cadoba. So <laughs> you have a talent right for now. quesadilla making that I didn't even know about until now, bro. So so much fajita vegetables <laughs> with the corn. <laughs> never mind, never mind. You and I are going to talk about that. All right. <laughs> so in these college towns, um, you've got a stable renter base. They're trying to get by on their Qdoba income. Right? They need a place to live while they're going to class or not going to class, as I was in college. Um, I did that. They need a place to crash, and et cetera. So you're providing that as a resource. It's a stable environment. Okay? There are lots of stable environments where you're good that you can get a consistent rental income. Military towns are great for that. Uh, in Colorado Springs, we have Fort Carson, Colorado, one of the largest um, – military installations in the country, very stable rental market near Carson because the soldiers, a lot of them prefer to rent than buy, which makes no sense, but a lot of them do. But the point is, is there are certain towns in the country that are really good for this. One of the ones that was at the top of the list was Columbia, Missouri, where the average rent for a one-bedroom uh, apartment is $714 and a two-bedroom goes up to $850. Okay. Right? And that was one of the... Uh, more affordable ones, to be honest with you. Check out the article to get more details there. But the point is, if you can buy what they refer to as doors, someplace that somebody's going to open to get in there, if you can buy doors and you can finance those doors at a payment of three, four hundred, maybe five hundred a month, and then rent them stably to college students at seven hundred to eight hundred a month, you're now making three to four hundred dollars a month in positive cash flow. Depending on what your retirement needs are. Okay, if you had 10 or 20 or 30 of these, you could be bringing in a consistent income, eight, nine, 10 grand a year. And on top of that, they're paying down the mortgage for you, right? So you're building wealth in multiple ways. You've got passive income coming in, the property's going up in value, and you're getting a rental income that gaps out the two of those three. So you're money coming in every month, paying down the mortgage and making money. It's an incredible deal. You know, and, and you just can't beat the long-term benefits of real estate holding. But how are you going to pay for all of it? And that's what we talk about with a foreclosure deals coach. It sounds theoretically awesome to do this, but where does the money come from to pay for all of it? Right? And that's what the discussion is today, building long-term growth through passive income. Okay, so to get to the end game here, we have to start at the beginning. If you have not yet done a real estate deal, you are behind the power curve a little bit. And this is not going to turn into a coaching pitch, I promise you. We save the coaching pitch for when you head out to dealhunteracademy.com and we walk you through, do a strategy call with you to see if you're a good fit for our coaching program. But assuming you are going to do this, okay, the assumption is you got to build an investment capital base to get going. We've talked about in previous episodes, hustling your way to your future in real estate, whatever your hustle's got to be, right? When you, and, and people are familiar with hustle in other businesses, right? If you're in college, putting yourself through college via Qdoba, that's a normal story, right? Yeah. If you're a med student, you know, taking a night shift at the bar so you can put yourself through med school, it makes sense to people. But when I talk about having a hustle business in real estate, like, I get this deer in the headlights look. What do you mean? I thought I was making money from real estate. No, there are two parts of real estate you got to make money from. The first one is fixing and flipping. It's how I got there anyway. It's fixing and flipping your way to having the investment capital you need to buy rental property. Okay, fixing and flipping is an incredible way to make an income. Just this week, we purchased a townhome. We picked it up for $218,000. I want you to write these numbers down. We bought it for two eighteen. dollars okay? It smells like smoke because they've been smoking in this damn thing for the better part of 20 years. And as a result, it will need to be painted and carpeted. Other than those two items... 
This place is not in bad shape. Paid two eighteen. dollars So figure paint's going to run me. I got really good subcontractors. Shout out to my subs. Appreciate you all. I got really good subcontractors for the paint. I got great guys for the carpet. I will spend just under $10,000 remodeling this property. And I'm doing remodeling in air quotes right now because I don't remodel. Right? We basically take ugly, we make it pretty as inexpensively as possible. So now paint and carpet goes from 218 to 228, let's just say. Retail on this thing with paint and carpet is 270. Right? In my course, I'm gonna I, I teach you how to buy the house. So you gotta find it first. You gotta fund it, you gotta find a way to pay for it. I'm using private money on the deal. Right? I'm going to teach you what to fix because you watch these damn flipping shows and they're teaching you, well, we're going to rip out this entire wall. I've decided <laughs> to put in an entire new basement. And while we're at it, I can't believe it doesn't have an underground pool. <laughs> we should make one of those with like, a sauna next to it. Absolutely. This is the only way this is going to work. Right? And those people, listen, in real life, lose a ton of money. Okay? And not the ones on the shows. They've perfected this. They get it. Okay? That's why they got a TV show. Okay? But in real life... You start over-improving property in the fixed stage, you will lose money on it, okay? And then I'm going to teach how to flip the property at a profit without listing it with an agent. For sale by owner, doing your own paperwork, that one piece alone will save you seven, eight, maybe ten grand per deal that you do, okay? So I promise not to turn this into a coaching pitch, but I'm doing it myself right now. 218 plus 10 is 228. I'm up to 270 retail. I can sell it on my own. Net profit on this deal, thirty, forty thousand dollars pretty easy. Depends on how long it takes me. Hi, this is Donnie Corum, your foreclosure deals coach. One of the things we talk about on the show is the importance of great foreclosure data and helping you to find a great deal on a foreclosure property. But where do you find this data? You're certainly not going to find it on Realtor.com. You can't get it on your local MLS. So we have partnered with data provider Foreclosures.com to get you the latest and greatest in foreclosure listings right there in your local market. These properties are not hit the market in most cases, and when they have been foreclosed, it gives you easy access to find out more detail so you can get the best deal on a foreclosure property. Getting started is super easy. Head on out to foreclosuredealscoach.com and click on the link labeled foreclosure list. Enter your zip code for a free seven-day trial of the best foreclosure listing data available in your local market. These properties are not even on the market yet, so you can get a jump on them and get a great deal. Once again, this is Donnie Corm, your foreclosure deals coach. We'll look forward to seeing you there. And I'm sharing that with you because if you're building it, if you have a business that is flipping your way to making 20, 30, 40 grand per deal, and you're doing one or two of those a month consistently, you will now have the income available. And you can maintain a day job while doing this, mind you, okay? You may still have your day hustle, whatever you do by day, and you're doing one or two of these flips, making 20, 30 grand a pop. Now you've got, when they say, I need 10% down or 20% down to buy this rental property, you've got the cash to do that, right? And that turned into a cash flowing rental that the day you plop down 20 grand cash, and it turns into four or $500 a month forever for the rest of your life, Okay. But you didn't get there by scraping your little pennies from your day job to come up with a 20% down payment to build your rental empire. You've got to know where you're going to invest, and this article will help with that, what cities are really super hot right now, college town-wise. But then you've got to come up with the capital to do it. Okay, And if you don't do both of those sides effective, I met tons of people who were buy-and-hold investors who spent 20, 30 years building this empire. And I'm not saying that ain't effective. Kudos to you, man. But that just took too long. You know, I'm not getting any younger. 20, 30 years, man, I'm going to be pushing 70 years old. How am I going to get in out of Ferrari at 70 years old? That don't make any sense. It's going to be quite the labor. Right? So we got to get there a ton faster. And the way to overdrive your investing process is to use flipping as an income source to come up with the down payment funds you need to do long-term buy and hold investing. Okay. Do you know the piece, do you notice the piece I left out of this strategy was wholesaling? And I got to tell you, I'm not anti-wholesaling. We have a wholesaling course coming up as part of Deal Hunter Academy. We're going to have that going on. We definitely want to teach the quick money that comes from wholesaling, but wholesaling is very similar to flipping. It just doesn't pay as well. 
right? You're making a little piece of the action to ship it over to a flipper who's going to make a large piece of the action. And I'll be frank with you, I prefer flipping over wholesaling personally because I'm going to take that money and roll into my long-term investment portfolio. You can do it with wholesaling, but because you're making such a small amount per deal, it's going to take you a lot longer to get there. All right. So now, whatever you got to do, though, to build that income to get you out of your day jobby job, do it, you know, within legal, ethical and moral bounds. This, is, this ain't power. You ain't ghost. <laughs> right. We, we saw how that ended. Right. right. Did, did not go off for ghost. You know I mean? ghost. Great show. Like, did you watch the last season of that? I, I got to get caught back up on because I feel like I still need to like make the most of my day, and I know if I start on the last season, yeah, I'll yeah, probably yeah. be stuck. That, that's a, a binge watch days. thing. You, yeah. you, you want to binge watch that out and get it over with. But it, it is hot, you know. So my point is, is, do it legally, ethically, get there, but build your nest egg using a quick money source. Not that anything about flipping is quick, but it's it's quicker than making hourly wages at your job, right? It's quicker than than trying to figure out other ways to capitalize your business, right? So you flip your way to provide this nest egg. Now you've got 30, 40 grand in the bank. You take that, you put a portion of that into savings, good old fashioned, I'm going to watch this grow, right, in a mutual fund or something like that. And you use the rest of it to invest heavily into buying long-term hold properties in cash-flowing towns like what's been described in this article. Okay. The combination of those two will get you to your end game, whatever it happens to be, in 10 years or so, as opposed to waiting 25, 30 years to get the same result. Right? You can get here the slow route, and I'm not at all saying that we don't have to do the slow route in certain cases. My problem is lack of patience. You know, I want to get there tomorrow. I'm encouraging you to do a little bit of both, a little bit of long-term investing, a little bit of short-term investing, and a lot of research and studying on your craft and becoming better at it. Because if you're improving yourself you know, mentally throughout this process, you can't go wrong. At some point, you will master it. As a guy who's been flipping properties for 15 years now, I bought my first flip when my daughter was one years old. We just celebrated her 16th birthday. Listen to the uh, second episode, I think, of the show where we go over in detail how my first flip and how badly I managed to screw that up. But I look back 15 years later and I go, I'm glad I went through that because I got better at it now. Today, my wife and I have multiple holdings. We have real estate properties that throw off rental income. And if I could just find a way to downscale my life a little bit, you know, and maybe Good luck. not have bought that brand new Audi Q7 that's in the garage right now, or the Viper, <laughs> or the other things that I, never mind. Um, if I had not done some of those things, I might be able to chill and retire right now at the tender age of 42 years old. You know, but I ain't that guy. You know I ain't that guy. I'm a hustler. At the end of the day, I'm here to build an empire. And an empire doesn't get by on being comfortable. If you want to build an empire too, you will need both sides of this equation to make it work. You will need the ability to produce high, quick income from the flipping side or wholesaling side. But I can tell you, mastering flipping pays a little bit more per deal. They're going to make it wholesaling. But you may need to start. If you've got no money at all, Right? You're trying to get going. You may need to start like a lot of people start, like how I started in wholesaling. Wholesale out a couple of deals, learn how to flip a couple of deals. But your long-term goal is to buy cash-flowing properties that will provide an income to you and future generations forever. And that's how you get off this reel. This is how you become financially independent through real estate. Okay, but a lot of people teach the buy and hold strategy. They fail. To, they leave out the part where you need a ton of capital to get going. A lot of people teach the flipping strategy, but they leave out the part where you're producing an income, but you're not building wealth. So you got to keep doing it and stay in the rat race for the rest of your life. And a ton of people right now are pitching the you don't need any money at all. All you have to do is wholesale property and you'll get rich. It's not completely inaccurate. It just won't work for the long term. Okay. The wholesale market is, one, is working wonderfully at the moment because the market is super hot. When the market stops being super hot, the gap between the wholesale price and the retail price will begin to close. When that gap starts to close, the wholesalers will be knocked out of the bid. The only people who will be left standing are well-capitalized flippers. That's a personal guarantee. You heard it here first. Okay, I'm telling you, you've got to learn all aspects of the business. You don't have to learn all of it now. You're a deal hunter. You're here on this show to get educated, to get better at what you're doing. And I'm here to tell you that it's a three-part process. Number one, get figured out how you're going to pay your bills, 
right? And wholesaling can do that. Number two, start making the big bucks so you have the investment capital. And number three, start taking that capital and rolling it into a long-term portfolio that can provide you forever. Okay, And I want to pound this home, and I want to make sure you're getting this point, because this is the future of your wealth we're talking about. And I am proud to say that I have multiple clients who have worked with me over the years. Some of them, listen, I didn't have all this figured out a decade ago. We're all in the process of learning. Okay, This is not something you get overnight, but I have clients who I started with as real as a real estate agent a decade ago who have created seven-figure net worths as a result of this long-term hold strategy. Okay, and myself, we're right on the edge of that area of a seven figure net worth based on a long term hold investment strategy. But you've got to start somewhere. And the key to getting started, number one, number one is you want to get dealhunter.io so you understand how to analyze the marketplace. Okay, that's step one. You've got to get the software. Number two, join up with the foreclosure deals coach insiders group. Because we're having these discussions about wealth building. Our whole essence is the mindset, methodology, and tools to build wealth through foreclosure investing. If you're buying properties behind book, they're already underpriced. You've already built in instant equity, instant wealth just by buying your first foreclosure deal. If you translate that wealth into additional income too... You're, you're a force of nature. And one of my favorite shows recently, if you didn't hear this one, go back and listen to it. Saudi Knight. Okay? The guy went from government lawyer to full-time real estate investor following this exact principle. Okay, This exact principle of he flipped a couple properties, used that to build some income. That income turned into a cash flowing rental database. And I, I don't remember how many houses we left off. He said off. he's got like 32 doors now or something? Somewhere in the 30s. That, that sounds about right. Okay, And if you imagine that each of those doors pays 200 bucks a month, he's $6,000 a month. And I'm, I'm just theorizing right now. But on top of that, he's building an empire that will provide for him and his kids and the generation after that forever. This is wealth building, not just income. Wholesaling, income. Flipping, income. Long-term buy and hold real estate, wealth. Do you see the difference? Okay, and we have to get you there, but the way to get there is to understand the process of how to get there. Okay, So that's really our time for today. We want to keep these relatively short and sweet. Get started, guys. Dealhunter.io. Let's get you in that software. Start learning how to analyze properties right there in your own local marketplace. You can set up to do a strategy session with me, your foreclosure deals coach, where we will go over whether you're a good fit for foreclosure deals coaching, where we'll take you through the find, fund, fix, and flip of doing your first foreclosure deal and then join the Facebook group. Head on out to the Foreclosure Deals Coach Insiders, all of which will be in the show notes on this very episode. The ability to get started in this, the most, the best time perhaps ever to invest in real estate could be right now here in this marketplace if you know how to operate within what's happening in the current market today. With that, this is Donnie Corum, your foreclosure deals coach, reminding you now and always, don't buy a house, buy a deal. Want more of the foreclosure deals coach? Hit subscribe and stay tuned for more of the mindset, methodology, and tools you'll need to invest in foreclosures. Visit foreclosuredealscoach.com and text DEAL to get a list of foreclosures in 